right? What are some of the uh, things that you can look at from just for Bitcoin um, so that you can understand what this market is doing without having to really listen to uh, a lot of the BS that Wall Street will be trying to put in your ears? Well, uh, Dan Mortahead from Pantera Capital has a really good outlook on the market. And here's one really, really simple metric, right? Which is uh, a lot of the times I, I keep these tabs open for stuff like realized price, stuff like balance price, stuff like the pie cycle top indicator. These are really simple on-chain data indicators um, that you can use to uh, know when we get super cheap prices or we get price to be too high. Um, another one here is the uh, HODL wave, one-year HODL wave, which is percent of supply last active in the one plus years ago for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin that hasn't moved for a year or more, right, is basically in this category. So if we open up glass node, we can see um, that this is still going to the upside. Now, the thing that Dan Moorhead here has uh, illustrated is each time that this metric starts to go down, meaning um, people who've had held Bitcoin for longer than a year are starting to get rid of their Bitcoin or dollar cost average out, right? When we see this dip, that tends to lead into the most bullish part of the market, into the peak. And now the peak doesn't happen necessarily at the trough of these, but the craziest part of the bull market does start, like the, the crazy over speculation does start once you get this metric rolling over, once you get long term, uh, longer term Bitcoiners dollar cost averaging out of the market. Now, when we look at the current metric, we have not even peaked on this yet. You can see it was kind of slowly going up here and now it has gone up with another spike meaning that we haven't gotten to the inflection point where the market is starting to take off like crazy. Now, the cool thing here about what uh, Dan Moorhead has uh, said here is that these rallies around the one-year HODL wave peaks, right, um, have led to uh, a rally into the peak as well as after the peak, which is much better. Um, and usually uh, these have happened, right? So this last paragraph here is really important. Uh, what's interesting, he says, is that the peaks in the indicator have occurred uh, no more than two quarters before the halving, um, uh, uh, which were uh, uh, 0.2 years, right? So 20% of a year before the halving, half a year after the halving, six months after the halving, and 0.3 years or 30% of the year before the half before or after the halvings, right? So the minus is before the halving, the plus is after the halving. So uh, if you look at those uh, HODL waves uh, compared to the, the peaks of them compared to where the halving was, they came within uh, basically um, two to six months of the halving, roughly speaking. Uh, so the next halving is expected to occur at the end of April uh, 2024. And then the other thing he says in here is those rallies have lasted on average uh, 1.3 years. So basically a, a year and a quarter uh, or a year and a third, sorry. So about a year and four months, right? So uh, if you see, you know, maybe about uh, a month, a couple months before the halving, we might peak out on that HODL wave or six months after the halving is the longest we've peaked after that. That gives you a range of where we could see uh, basically the peak of the market. And